welcome to Go There on 4th, a Christian video podcast about faith, football, and fantasy football. I'm Pastor Jason Barnett, a.k.a. the Dirt Path Pastor, and I'm not a fantasy football expert. I'm not even a football expert. I'm just a football junkie journeying through this football season with you. Now, this is Tuesday. We have two episodes a week. Thursdays, I make my game weekly game picks. And on Tuesdays, we run it back. We see the results. And, uh, man, my week one game picks were rough. Uh, it's like I had to, to dust off my picking abilities. Um... But that's kind of the theme of week one, not just for me, but I felt like you know this has been a this was a weird week, right? A weird week for football because one, we had no idea what really to expect. We knew, we knew what we th- hoped, right? We we had our predictions, we had the experts' predictions, we had stats from last year, but all of that means nothing once the season actually starts, and, and that's kind of where we were at. We we were at the start of all things here, uh, and, and I think we're we're seeing kind of in the NFL the the downside of only playing three preseason games because uh, now week one kind of is becoming that preseason game. We saw that with, you know, we'll get into this, but se- several of the teams and their quarterbacks just did not seem like in the normal flow of their offense that we're used to seeing them in. I think that's partially because they did, they played but one or two series throughout the preseason. But anyway, let's jump into my game picks for, for this week. How did I do looking at the Thursday night game and the early game? Um, Lions versus the Chiefs. I had picked the Chiefs in this one. I really, and I didn't even think that them not having Kelsey was going to be that big a deal. Uh, but I was not prepared for the, all the drops of the Chiefs receivers and also the aggressiveness of Dan Campbell. I mean, first quarter, you're going on a fake punt in your own territory and you get it. I, I loved it. I actually loved the call on fourth down that Campbell had earlier or in the fourth quarter when he was trying to run the clock on, on Mahomes and. I think they ended up picking up the first down. I can't remember. Um, but I, I liked the call because even if it failed, they didn't get it. Uh, it you're going to get my home to the short field, and either your defense is going to succeed or they're going to score. But you get the time back with the chance to – with enough time on the clock to try and score yourself and even things back up. So I loved I loved Dan Campbell's aggressiveness. And I think the Lions are the real deal. I think, I think they have a real shot to win the AFC North. I thought they'd be battling the Vikings, but – Unless, yeah, hopefully, I mean, I don't think I'm going to count the Vikings out yet, but I, the Packers looked pretty stout as well. But was that the Packers or is that the Bears being bad? Or is it a combination of both? We don't know yet. We'll get there in a minute. Panthers versus the Falcons. I picked the Falcons uh, and they got the W. Um, and I'll, I'll say this. If you have either of the Falcons running backs on your fantasy roster, you should feel, be, be feeling pretty good for this season. They both got plenty of usage, uh, plenty of touches, plenty of yardage, uh, and I really think it's you know the touchdowns are going to be, be dependent upon who's got the ball in the red zone. So uh, hopefully, we'll get Bengals versus the Browns. I picked the Bengals to to win this one, and boy, this was a snoozer. And the stat that stuck with me from this game is with, with Deshaun Watson starting. Uh, the, the Browns have only averaged 16 points per game, and I think they ended up with 19 in that one. Uh, so just barely above their, their average. So I, I don't know that the Browns' offense is going to be as dynamic as most people are thinking with Deshaun Watson there. I think Deshaun Watson's still r- knocking off some of the rest. But also, I think he's being targeted by teams' defenses. Not just because he's the quarterback, but for other reasons than that, too. Now, I, I, have, I have a friend who is a Browns fan, and and, and rather than being excited about the Browns picking up this win, it's actually giving them anxiety because they know that the Browns are going to be the Browns at some point and come bring them crashing back to reality. So maybe this is a year that's different, but you know, Brown, no one knows better than a Browns fan not to get their hopes up yet. So anyway, Jaguars versus the Colts. Um, yeah, I know I picked the Colts to win this one. I'm always going to pick the Colts to win. I'm actually not surprised that they didn't win. Um, really, the, the, as a Colts fan this year, it's going to be a fun season because the win total expectations are not high for us. Uh, they're not high. When I look at my Colts, I'm not expecting them to be a playoff team, but it's exciting because they may end up hanging around games they shouldn't be in. 
and they may knock off a team and just ruin it for other fan bases for the week, and I, I can be happy with that. Uh, so the Colts lost. Aaron, uh, Anthony Richardson had one interception. Uh, he's got one interception down, 28 to go. If he's going to pass Peyton Man- Manning, uh, I do love Anthony Richardson. Uh, but I, but again, I'm not going to be I'm not going to be upset even if he breaks Peyton record uh, throwing interceptions here. Uh, it's just going to be a fun thing for us to track. Buccaneers versus the Vikings. I picked the Vikings to win this one. The Vikes had three turnovers, and I think what we learned is you never take your cousins to Baker Mayfield May- Baker Mayfield's house. Just don't take your cousins there. Uh, Titans versus the, the Saints. I had picked the Titans to win. I really thought this was going to be low-scoring smash-mouth football, and it kind of was. Uh, but the Saints came out and ta- on top. So the Saints' defense is for real. Uh, they they held the the, t- the Titans to five field goals. They had three sacks and forced three turnovers. I mean, if their offense had played better for the Saints, this, this score would have been a lot different, but that that's not the case. 49ers versus Steelers. I picked the 49ers in this one. I did not think it was going to be the beatdown that it turned into, but, man, the 49ers beat them down. Um and I'll get more into why that was painful for me later. All right, Cardinals versus the Commanders. Hey, for a team trying to tank it, the Cardinals almost pulled this one off. Uh, but the Commanders got the win. To me, this had one of the funniest moments of the week. Uh, if you go around and you search for the, the clip, there was a moment where one of the Cardinals defenders was flagged for a late hit out of bounds. But when he did that, he actually hit, I think it was Sam Howe, and knocked him into the referee and knocked the referee down. So the referee is laying flat on his back, and then he sits up like he's the Undertaker in the WWE, right? Where those moments where you think he's unconscious, and the, but then the dead man just sits right back up and stares you down. Well, that's what the referee did. He stared down the defender, and then he tossed the yellow flag like right in the defender's direction. It was it was hilarious. Uh, look up the video. Um, Texans versus the Ravens. This was a rough outing for for the the Ravens offense. But again, I think that goes back to week one of the NFL is now becoming. Game four of the preseason, but just in live games. Um, but the good news was that they played the, the Texans, and the, they were able to sack Stroud five times. Um, I really do think Anthony Richardson had a bad, better game than C.J. Stroud. I think he actually had a better game than Bryce Young as well. Um, not that the other two had a terrible games, but anyway. All right, so for the early games, for, uh, I went four and five for the early games, so I, you know, I missed more than I got right, but that happens. Uh, it's week one. All right. This is, a, this is a podcast about faith, football, and fantasy football. So for the faith element of this, I always like to share a brief devotional. and um, I'm going to kind of share a devotional today based on something that's going on in my personal life. Uh, last week, I, was, I, I got in a, a little bit of trouble with, with my wife um, because mainly for the, like the last month and a half, I was not taking my weekly day off. You know, you know we as a pastor, and, and pastors are encouraged to take a day off during the week. Just like everybody else, we need time to rest, recover, and recoup. Uh, but I've not been doing that. And uh, so I got in a little bit of trouble. But I also, one thing that I do is I track my hours. Not because I feel like I have to. Not because my church is keeping tabs on me and, and things like that. And, and not because I think it's... It, I, I track my hours mainly just, one, as an accountability tool for myself to make sure that I am putting in the work. I'm paid to be full-time, so I should be putting in full-time work. Um, but also to see where the areas where I am spending my time. Am I spending my time in the right areas? But you know, through this last month and a half, with the weeks me not taking a day off, something interesting began to happen. I was working every day of the week, but I noticed the number of hours I was working was going down. And it was not because I was slacking on the job or skipping assignments or not doing things I was supposed to do. No, it was it was because because I was not taking a day off and allowing myself to recover and recoup. The effectiveness of of what I was doing was lessening. The time, the energy, and the mind, and my mind being able to focus on the things I needed to focus on was becoming less and less. It was it's it was weird. It's almost like it, it, my body was telling me I needed to rest. I needed to take a break. Because let's face it, our human bodies were not designed to work seven days a week, twenty four hours a day. Rest is important, and and so I, as I'm thinking about this idea of rest, it it naturally it led me to the Ten Commandments in Exodus twenty, right? 
and in the fourth commandment, which reads, Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your manservant or maidservant, nor your animals, nor the alien within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them. But he rested on the Sabbath day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. And now, when we're studying the Ten Commandments, it's important to remember that these commandments are for our good. God's not doing it to punish us. God's not doing it to just say, I'm the boss and these are my rules. No, these are... These are things that are healthy for us as human beings. If we follow these Ten Commandments, they are for our benefit. The other thing about the Ten Commandments is they are the basics of what it means to be a good human being. The basics. They're the starting block. Right? Uh, you know, Think about you should not murder. Yeah, it's important that we don't murder people. But remember when Jesus teaches on the Sermon on the Mount, he, 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 goes, he takes a step further. He says... Not only should you not murder people, why, why don't we work on not getting angry at them? See, it goes beyond just what's here. This is the starting place. But I think it's fascinating that the fourth one is, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Now, for a long time in the church, we've, we've, we've expressed the Sabbath day as... Well, that means you need to be at church on Sunday. All the businesses ought to be closed. You, you shouldn't work. You should just stay at home with your family and have a meal. The irony of that to me is we don't worship Jesus on the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day is Saturday. That's why the Jews went to synagogue on the Sabbath, right? That was the day God rested. We as Christians, we worship on Sundays because Jesus rose again on a Sunday. So that, it, there's a shift there. But I think there... What that, that kind of teaches us is it's not about the day of the week that it is. It's just about that we take time to rest. And when we take time to rest, it's not about necessarily, you know, not cutting the grass. I've been at, I was at a church where a, a, a man loved cutting grass. And one of the ways he gave back to the church and was he would come and cut the grass on Sundays. And he got some flack from people in congregation, but he wasn't cutting the grass on Sundays because he, it, it wasn't work to him. That was his prayer time. That was his way of relaxing and, and enjoying himself was cutting the grass. So it's not even about what we do or don't do. What it's about is taking a break from our daily routine, taking a break from our labors and finding a time to rest and be and allow our bodies to recoup, allow our, mi- our minds to shift from the grindstone and take a step back from it. And, and that's partially why my hours started to decrease in effectiveness it was because my mind was tired. And so it couldn't focus on the things it needed to. It couldn't, couldn't work through the problems the way it normally would. Why? Because my mind needed to rest. And I would encourage you to do the same thing. Don't work yourself to death 24 seven. Find time to take a break. Find time to rest. Spend time with your family. Uh, you know, when, when I finally took a day off last week, uh, my wife, what we do, we, we got up on, on Friday and we just took off and got out of town for most of the day. That way, I, if I was not in town, I was not going to be tempted to come to the office and work or do anything. Uh, so find time. Find time to rest. Find time to allow your mind to recover. Find time to allow your body to recover. Well, if you enjoyed that devotional, I invite you to, to uh, visit the Ravenna Church of the Nazarene if you live in the Estill County area. We'd love to have you. Our services start at 1040 at 5 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Uh, you, or you can catch us live on our Facebook feed. Or you can also check out my weekly sermon on the Dirt Pastor Men podcast, available on all your favorite podcasting apps. All right, so let's get back to our game picks here. Uh, for our Sunday afternoon game picks, um, the Packers versus the Bears. I actually picked the Bears to win this one. I thought the Bears are going to be at home. And we, I didn't know much about Jordan Love. I wasn't sure about him, what, what he, how he would be able to step in and, and take over for Aaron Rodgers. And I'll just say this. Love went 15 out of 27 for 245 yards and three touchdowns. I think the Bears sacked him only one time. Fields, on the other hand, went 24 for 37. For 216 yards of touchdown and interception, and he was sacked four times. And I really thought Fields was going to take a step forward this year. Um, but we'll see. 
you know, I'm maybe not. Uh, but I do think Jordan Love had a good enough week that you know he's worth considering stashing on your bench. Uh, and if you're a guy that's going to have to stream a quarterback based on matchup, Jordan Love might not be a terrible option. So Packers won that one, so I got that one wrong. Raiders versus the Broncos. I picked the Broncos thinking surely Sean Payton's going to get the Broncos headed in the right direction. He's going to figure out what's wrong with Russell Wilson. Uh, I think they still have just have some work to do. Uh, the Raiders got the win in that one. Eagles versus the Patriots. I think this is one of, this is one of the best games of the week. It really looked like the Eagles were going to run away with this early on, but mainly it was just because the Patriots were committing so many turnovers, making so many unpatriot-like mistakes. Um, and really, the, the I feel like the Patriots were one toe drag or foot in bounds from, from causing me to get this pick wrong. That's how close this game was. Uh, but the Eagles got it done. Dolphins versus the Chargers. I picked the Chargers to win this one. I figured they'd come out on fire because of how their season ended last year. And uh, as good as the Eagles Patriots game was, this this was the game of the week. Um, a thousand yards of offense, seventy points between the two teams went down to the wire. Uh, Dolphins pulled it out, even though I picked the Chargers, so I got that one wrong. Uh, Rams versus the Seahawks. Um, I had picked the Seahawks to win at home in this one. Uh, but you know, Aaron, uh, Matthew Stafford was back, and he looked like Matthew Stafford. Uh, the Rams looked a lot better. The Rams' defense, because the Rams' offense was actually effective, the Rams' defense looked like the Rams' defense. And uh, this, you know, this there was there's another funny video going around social media right now. If you've not seen it yet, uh, it's of Gino, Gino Smith, right? And and there's a play in the game where his mic is still hot. They they didn't turn it off during the play, and so he drops back to pass and and. The Red Sea of Lyman opened up and revealed Aaron Donald charging full steam ahead at Gino. And Gino has a hilarious reaction, right? It, he reacts, uh, before we make too much fun of Gino Smith, he reacts much in the same way that most of us would if we looked up and we saw Aaron Donald charging at us full speed ahead. Uh, but that's what happens to Gino. It's, it's hilarious. You'll, you'll see it on social media if you've not seen it yet. So, for the afternoon games, I went one of four. The only game I got right in the afternoon games was the Eagles versus the Patriots. So that puts me at 5-9 and nine for the week so far. Uh, so well below 500 on the game picks for this week. All right, now it's time to share with you how my fantasy football team did for the week. Uh, I'm in a league called the Mighty Managing Armchair Rangers. Um, it's a 12-team PPR league with some other cu custom scoring for, with some church folks and friends. Um, then this was week one for us as it was for you, I'm sure. Uh, at quarterback, I I, uh, I had Daniel Jones, and, and, and I was concerned about the matchup with the Cowboys, but I was also really concerned about, because uh, my alternative was Brock Purdy against the Steelers, and I thought, well, Steelers are going against, or Brock Purdy is going against the Steelers with T.J. Watt back. They've add, added Patrick Peterson. I just didn't like the matchup, and, and in hindsight, I should have went with Brock Purdy over Daniel Jones. I mean, then again, was any of us really prepared for the beatdown that Daniel Jones took? Like, I think he was sacked at least seven times. And he couldn't seem to throw it to the right person. But in his defense, he didn't have time to throw it. So, so yeah, I got that. I, I messed that pick up. It really cost me this week. Uh, running back one, I went with Tony Pollard. And that one worked out. He had 70, 70 yards rushing, 12 yards receiving, two touchdowns. Pretty good week. Running back two, Damian Pierce versus the Ravens. He had 38 rush yards, nine receiving yards. Not the greatest of weeks. I know he's split in some carries, but that was enough enough touches where, you know, I'm not super concerned about it yet, but um, not horrible. And because I'm in PPR, you know, I got the catches to go with it. So he had a decent week. Uh, I had St. Brown versus the Chiefs at what my receiver won. He had six catches, 71 yards, and touchdown. I... I couldn't have asked for a better start from amongst St. Brown. Uh, great week. Jalen Waddle. Uh, I, I started at receiver two versus the Chargers. He had four catches for 70 yards. The only thing miss, missing from his day was a touchdown, but that'll come, I think. Uh, now, what really hurt me was my tight end position. I had Mike and I have Mark Andrews at tight end. He was second in catches, and he was, that means he was only behind Travis Kelsey in production last year. But man, he was he did not play. So I went with Nojoku. He he cut, had two passes he caught on three targets. So he only he got only got three looks the whole game and he caught two of those. 
Just he just did not get the targets that Mark Andrews would have gotten. So I'm really hoping Mark Andrews will be back this week. Uh, but we'll see. He's still listed as questionable. And then the flex, this is another spot that got me in trouble for this week. Uh, I had Brees Hall originally in my flex. When I did the podcast, or the last uh, the Thursday episode with you all, I was planning to go with Brees Hall, but then I got scared. Right? I got scared because he's going against that Buffalo Bills defense, and I remembered how strong Buffalo started off the year. And I also got scared because, you know, Aaron Rodgers is there, and... and uh, how is the offense going to look? Were they going to be more pass heavy than run, or run, pass heavy than run heavy this year than they have in, in like they were last year? Uh, so I ended up benching Brees Hall. I went with Scary Terry from the Commanders instead. And that was just a mistake. Not not that Scary Terry had a horrible day, but not not anywhere compared to Brees Hall. Uh, so moving forward, I'd be surprised if I move move Brees Hall out of the lineup at any point unless he gets injured. Uh, so that was a mistake on my part. Now, defense, remember I had told you I had drafted the Patriots defense, and I just did not like the Patriots defense up against the Eagles early on. So I ended up dropping the Patriots and picking up the Vikings, and that turned out to be a really good move. Even though the Vikings lost, they still ended up outscoring the Patriots defensive-wise. And then I had Nick Folk at my kicker spot, uh, and it's always a good week when your kicker gets five field goals. Uh, anytime you can get 18 I think I had 18 points from him because we get bonus. Uh, part of our field goals kicker scoring is based on the, the distance of the field. I think it's three points for a field goal in the 30-yard range, and four, four points for the 40-yard range, and then 50 for 50 yards and above. Uh, so 18-point day from your kicker, that's a, that's a solid outing fantasy football-wise. But unfortunately, I dropped my opening matchup thanks to Daniel Jones and fear. Uh, so hopefully I can bounce back in, for week two. Uh, the season's not over, and if you're like me and you lost season, uh, your opener, hey, it's always disappointing to lose any game that you're in, drop any matchup that you're in, but don't don't feel too defeated, right? You, there's still plenty of time. Uh, there's a new week this week. Just do your research, search the right waiver wire, um, and especially look for some of those lesser-known guys that are not getting the attention from the media today. But had solid games. Those are guys that you could add to your bench right now. All right, make a waiver claim on and slowly start. You know, start adding. Start start working, right? Um, so hang on there. All right. So here are my picks for the prime time games: the Cowboys versus the Giants. I did pick the Cowboys to win, and all I can say is somebody send Daniel Jones a bucket of ice or something. The man, the poor man, has to be black and blue still. Uh, two days later. Um, Bills versus the Jets, uh, and just for starters, I hate it for Aaron Rodgers that he was hurt on the first drive of the game. I hate it that he's hurt for the season. Um, prayers for Aaron Rodgers and his recovery. Um, we hate it. We hate it. You know, it's, football, you know, we get passionate about in football about our teams and our players, and, and we get, those of us that play fantasy football, we get passionate about who's on our team and who's not on our team. But an injury is never a cause of celebration. Uh, these are uh, we we can't allow our time playing in fantasy football to make us forget that, that these players on our team are real human beings uh, that, that breathe, blink, and bleed like we do. And um, we should never cheer when they're hurt, and we should always be willing to hurt with those who hurt, mourn with those who mourn. And so I hate it for Aaron Rodgers, uh, but I will say this: I was impressed that the Jets were able to win. Um, as deflating as that news was for them as a team, just to, for the defense to go out there, and I can't remember number three's name in the secondary for the Jets, but he was he might have been the best receiver on the Bills last night. It seemed like no matter where he was on the field, Josh Allen was able to find him and throw him the ball. Um, but he played lights out. The defense for the Jets played lights out. Um, the running back stick, st uh, stepped it up. And how about that catch in the fourth quarter by Garrett Wilson? Falling down. Guy hanging on to your arm is still able to pull it in and get the touchdown. That was an incredible play, incredible incredible win for the Jets. Um, so, as a matter of fact, I actually picked the Jets to win this game. I, th I felt like the, the Bills were going to start off slow for some reason this year. And Now, granted, I picked the Jets thinking Aaron Rodgers would be part of the reason why. Um, so I'm even more impressed that they were able to do it without him. So 
Uh, I was I went two and zero for prime time this week, so that put me at seven and nine for week one, and it, which finishing below five hundred is never where you want to be. But hey, um, I'm only two away from evening things up, uh, so hopefully I can get back on track in week two. Um, how'd your team do? Uh, what what dilemmas are you in? I'd love to hear from you. You can share it in the comments. You can use the link my link tree that's posted in the show notes. Send me a message. Let me know what's going on with your fantasy football team. I'd love to hear from you. Um, so if you have any questions about faith for football, please send them in. And again, please be sure to check out my other podcast, the Dirt Pastor Sermon Podcast, my weekly sermon from Ravenna Church in Nazarene, and follow me on TikTok where I do uh, devotional videos and other things like that. So until Thursday, happy fantasy football.